Hi folks, Gary here. There's been a few people on YouTube lately asking about KD magnetic delayed action uncouplers. So I thought I'd just do a quick demo today. Um, it's pretty hard to film some of this stuff, but I'll give it my best shot. So without further ado, let's start. Now, first of all, the couplers I use are code 100 and they're just simply super glued to the rail tires. Uh, pretty easy, but code 80 you would have to cut the tires out. Now, following that, what I recommend you do is use a KD height gauge, and that can be used to gauge the height of the magnetic coupler for the correct position. For those who don't know, the pin in the height gauge is used for their uncouplers. You simply just put it on the track and make sure the pin is flush, and if it is, the coupler or uncoupler is at the right height. Another important thing to consider is to make sure your track is at is fairly level. Um, mine's at a 0.5% grade, just sitting on this workbench. Um, you'll see why in the next little clip why that, this is important. I just use my Fat Max to um, to have a look. When you're building your layout, always make sure you have a Fat Max handy or something similar. Now you'll notice that the box car, as I pull it back, the magnet draws it forward. I'll just check to show you the other ends a bit easier. So if I push it, the magnet will actually drag the cars back. So they will roll into your locomotive if you don't back off far enough or the track is not level. So that's important. Let's have a look at how this all works. So first of all, we'll back the loco up to the box car in a normal fashion. My switching skills aren't the best, so you'll have to forgive me for that. And it takes a bit of practice, I must admit. But we'll see what happens. So once hooked to the box car, or whatever you're hooking to, just drag it forward. until you get over the uncoupler. Now, you might have noticed that they sprung. You just take a bit of tension off and I just hit the reverse just slightly to make sure they're unlocked. Then you can pull the loco away. Now, I stopped it there just to show you that the loco coupler has swung to the right. The boxcar coupler has also swung to the right. Now, this will be a bit more evident on a shot that's coming up. So as we come back with the loco, you will see how these couplers react to one another. And this is where they get the delayed action from. It's quite quite clever actually. So you notice as I say when the loco gets close the coupler swings to the right. And two tangs actually push push the couplers. The two knuckles are resting on the outside of the knuckle couplers on the guides, if you like, preventing them from closing. So now you can just simply push your rolling stock back and they will not latch. I just pulled the loco away just to put them back in a normal position. So that's basically all it is. They just hold the jaws open um, until you stop the positive push backwards. So you can push them as far as you like, as long as you always rem keep that positive action going. So we'll just come back and hook onto this. It's very difficult to film this because, as you can imagine, I've got to try and get the camera in to on top of this stuff. So this is a normal 
couple. You'll notice how the latches lock. The two guides actually force the couplers back in, and then when you pull away, they self-lock. That's a normal latch. And as long as you keep positive force on the couplers going over the uncouplers, they won't detach. Now, just so that people may be wondering how this performs with other manufacturers' couplers, I've been using KD on those two cars, or the, sorry, the Loco and the Boxcar. The Caboose has standard Barkman Easy Mate couplers. I've done nothing to them whatsoever. And they work fine. In fact, they work extra well. So you notice they're now unlatched. I can move forward. The couplers both move to the right. I can now push that caboose back to any position I like. In the delayed position. And then simply drive off. I'll unlatch the box car as well. You notice how that box car followed the locomotive a little bit? When you've got a string of cars attached to it, it probably wouldn't do that, but single cars do. It's, I believe it's the metal wheels. I don't quote me on that one, but so that's basically it. I, and it's a bit hard to describe and show, but I hope you've got a little bit more of an idea of how they work. Thank you.